Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer software testing interview question 209. That is, how do you execute your test cases daily? Let me answer. So how do you execute your test cases daily? Like uh, it's a tricky question again. Okay, so genuinely they want to know like uh, day to day, like uh, at your workplace, how do you guys actually execute the test cases? What happens at your workplace? Okay, the interviewer want to know. Okay, so whether you are a genuine candidate or not is the ultimate uh, reason why this kind of questions we will be asked in the interviews anyhow. Okay, so guys, uh, let's answer genuinely. Okay, let's answer genuinely how how we generally is good the test cases at our workplace on a daily basis. Okay. So guys, fine. So generally guys, uh, we prioritize our test cases. Okay, so there may be a lot of test cases. Our application will be very complex. Whatever the application that we'll be testing at our workplace will be kind of complex, right? So it consists of a lot of test cases. Daily executing all the test cases is not possible at all. So what is the process we generally follow is the test cases that we are executing are already prioritized. Okay, P1, P2, P3, P4, priority one, test cases, priority two, test cases. Any functionality you take, any functionality of the application you take, for every functionality, we first prioritize the test cases. Okay, P, uh, we divide the test case into four, three, uh, four to five categories. Some people will divide into P0 to P4, some people will prioritize into P1 to P4, like that. Okay, so anything, anything is fine. We generally Prioritize our test cases first P1 to P1, P2, P3, P4. P1 means high priority test cases, okay? Very important test cases. Followed by P2, then P3, P4. Why uh, why we have to test uh, or execute our test case based on our priority means always will not get time, guys, okay? Whether we get time or we don't get time, in all situations, we should be ready, okay? So we should test our or execute our test cases based on the priority of the test cases, okay? So high priority test cases when you execute first, right? Automatically the risk of missing the defects, important defects in the application will be reduced. Okay. So the main reason why we have to execute our test case based on priority is the risk reduction. Okay. So let's say there is a particular test case like a user enters valid username, valid password and clicks on login button. This is a high priority, highest priority test case, P1 priority test case. If you if you delay testing this kind of test case, what happens if the user is not able to log in after the software is released into the market? Okay, after you say testing is done and uh, you say this login functionality is not working, it will be very bad, right? This is a very, the risk is very high for that particular defect. Very important defect is missed in the software. So that's the reason guys, there will be a lot of defects. You, you see even after testing the software also, there may be some defects in the software, that's okay. But what kind of defects are left out by the testers? We thought, what kind of defects are missed by the uh, uh, software testers after testing is what is important. So such kind of important, critical kind of defects should not be missed. So what we generally do is whether we have time or we don't have time for testing, whatever the reason may be, first we'll execute the test cases based on the priority of the test case. P1 test cases we complete first, okay? So that, that kind of defects will not be there and risk will be reduced for us, okay? Risk of risk problem will be reduced for us. Then we'll go with the next priority test cases, P2 kind of test cases. And then next level risk will be reduced. Then P3, next level, if you still have time, P4, okay? All the test cases will be completed. If you still have time after executing the test cases, we do exploratory testing and, you know, right kind of testing with an intention of identifying more defects in the software to reveal the defects which are generally not found by executing the test cases. This is what, this is how we execute the test cases, okay? We prioritize the test cases, okay? And execute the test cases and then reduce the risk, uh, okay? While executing the test cases, we should focus on whether we are reducing the risk of the, uh, missing the important defects in the software, okay? That's what is the important thing that you have to note down. Second thing is nowadays test management tools, okay? Automation is everywhere, guys, okay? Tools automate the things, right? You see, uh, what, what do you, uh, like, just see a small difference in the real world, okay? Let's say if I ask you to add two numbers without giving you a calculator, 
okay you can add but you will take some time but uh, what if i give you a calculator okay and uh, if i ask you to add two numbers immediately you will give me the answer right that is nothing but automation right we are automating the calculation part there similarly for executing the test cases managing the test cases and all those stuff tools are there now in the market we generally call these tools as test management tools lot of examples of tools are there in jira by default test management tools are not there we install some plugins like zephyr and x-ray and all those stuff and uh, we have other uh, test management tools like test file and many things are there in the market okay like test management tools how this test management tools will help us is okay uh, using this test management tools you don't have to write your test cases in some excel files or something okay you can write your test cases in the tool itself that's one thing okay then you can assign the test cases you, if you have a very big team and you are the test lead assume the pain point okay of going to each and every team member and okay just open this excel file and then this particular functionality you run the test cases today like you see manual process is always difficult like with the invention of this test management tools it's now very easy guys okay so you can mention in the interviews that uh, our test lead will assign the test cases for our execution in the test management tool and uh, once we get the notification and all we generally start executing those test cases that are assigned for our day okay so the, the test lead who is responsible for the project will be selecting a set of test cases from a particular functionality this many number of test cases and will be assigning on your name on that particular day whatever the test cases that are assigned to you with the help of the test management tool by the test lead that you have to complete okay so you can execute the test cases like that and also executing the uh, you see and also in the same if you are following the test management tools means you will be executing the test cases in the test management tools only you will be updating the status like whether it is pass or fail or okay whatever it is okay whatever the result of the execution of the test case also you will be updating the test management tool itself okay then reports so automatically this test management tools will generate the report for you like how many test cases passed failed okay and all those stuff and one more important point guys apart from this test management tools and priority based of executing the test cases is reporting the defects okay so a uh, lot of people do a lot of mistakes uh, while executing the test cases you see when you are executing the test cases if the test case is passed then that's fine guys you can go and execute the next test case without any delay okay immediately you can go to the next test case and execute the test case and if that is also passed go to the third test case and execute the test case if that is also passed go to the fourth test case and execute but what if a particular test case fails do you have to go immediately to the next test case by simply changing the status of the test case to fail and uh, go to the next test case this is what is the main mistake that most of the testers will do okay so we should not be doing that when a particular test case fails we have to stop there okay we have to stop there investigate why the test case is failing first okay investigate properly why the test case is failing first and after you are clear with the uh, reasons why the test case is failing then you have to first report a defect against that particular test case okay without your uh, report a defect for a failed test case you should not execute the next test case okay so this is one major thing okay so just explain this uh, to the interviewer so that uh, the interviewer will get confidence that you know everything okay so this person knows that when a particular test case fails first we have to report the defect and go to the next test case okay the interviewer will feel like so this kind of small things right uh, will uh you know right uh, give the genuinity to that particular interviewer okay you are you, this guy is genuine kind of thing okay fine anyhow so and also guys uh, uh, while executing the test cases you should know with how many types of statuses will be there okay so the results like uh your execution results you have to update right at the end of the execution of that particular test case you have to put either pass fail or something right so what are such uh, statuses that you put not tested let's say due to lack of time on that particular day uh, already you spend a lot of time and uh, the time is up and uh, you don't have much time to execute the test cases by default you will put all the test cases status to not tested these test cases are not tested today okay so not tested is the default status then uh, next one you have executed the test case okay when you uh, you have executed the test case and identify that that expected result is matching with the actual result and everything is working fine as per the test case then you will pass the test case you will you will set the status of that particular test case as pass but what if what if uh, the expected result is not matching with the actual result that is actual result is not matching with the expected result in that case investigate why 
the actual result uh, is coming different from what is expected and uh, what is a what is a problem there and once you are confirmed then you have to fail the test case not only fail the test case guys before moving to the next test case i already mentioned you have to report a defect okay for the failed test case then fourth one this is another uh, rare case that will happen so what happens while executing the test case is okay one test case will fail because of that particular test case okay there will be a defect also you reported for that for, for that particular failed test case but uh, because of that failed test case or because of the defect which is uh, causing that particular test case to fail uh, some set of test cases you are unable to run okay let's say there is a defect with login you are unable to login can you execute other test cases uh, after login can you execute some test cases uh, which need to be tested after login is it possible if the login itself is not possible so they are blocked okay you have to mark all those test cases as blocked because of that particular defect uh, or that particular test case failing okay so the all these test cases are blocked without login how can you test the test case related to functionalities uh, which appear after login right so these are the general status as guys okay so explain all this stuff to prove yourself that uh, you know how to execute the test cases and how do you execute the test cases daily okay what are your experiences uh, throughout the day while uh, whatever that comes to your mind uh, regarding executing the test cases you should explain okay so that the interviewer will know properly and not only that guys after executing all the test cases by end of the day comes okay it's not just executing the test cases right whatever the test cases you execute executed you have to update that your test lead okay test lead or uh you have to uh, status update of the test execution like uh, the test lead generally sends an email at the end of the day known as status update email to the clients with the list of the test cases okay the test cases also will be attached or information related to the test cases also will be attached if in case of tools and all right uh, okay this many number of test cases we executed today and this many passed this many failed for the failed test cases these are the defects we reported okay like that some status update we have to send to the client okay so all these things we will generally take care of while executing the test cases so hope guys you got the answer like how do you execute your test cases daily so if you can answer like this ultimately the interviewer will definitely come to know that okay this person has given a perfect answer okay so that's all for this session in the next session i am going to answer another software testing interview question for you till then see you bye bye